Hi, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, we're a webinar, we're a webcast, we're an online show. Um, there's all sorts of words for what we do. Um, mostly good I hope <laughs> um, but whatever we want to call us we're here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time um, and if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays that's fine we do record the show every week and we post recordings to our website and I'll show you that at the end of today's show I'll show you where you can get all of our recordings um, we put up the recording we put up any presentations or documents or handouts any presenters have um, and any links to any websites that they might mention um, are all collected and posted there as well so you can have all of your um, everything later so um, as we're going through this we do see there's um, websites or URLs or links or something, don't try and scribble them all down while we're doing the show. Um, you'll have access to these slides and then those links directly anyways at the end. Um, we do a um, mixture of things here on Encompass Live, presentations, book reviews, um, mini training sessions, demos. Um, basically, our only criteria is something library related. So if it's having happen, happening in libraries or having to do with libraries, um, we'll have it on the show. Um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do, oh, oh I should say um, the show is also free and open, both the live show and the recordings to anyone. It's just all right there publicly on our website. So um, if you know of someone who might be interested in this topic, uh, a colleague, friend, whoever, go ahead and share the information with them. They can watch it and um, see the recording as well later. Um, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff do presentations um, for things that we're doing through the Library Commission, but we also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have this morning. <laughs> um, to my left here, um, we have uh, Catherine Kelly and Katie Murtha. Hi. Hello. And they're from just up the street from us, just a few a blocks block away. away. Yeah. yeah. Lincoln City Libraries here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, and um, they're going to talk about this video. I don't know if we call it a series, set of videos. Right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. That they've um, created um, for um, new immigrant populations, people mm -hmm. coming into the city. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to hand it over to you guys, take it away, and tell us about um, what you did. Great. Thanks, Krista. If you want to, you can move this over to get the mouse better, or you can use the keyboard, whichever I, we'll, works we'll, for we'll, you. We'll fumble through. <laughs> Hopefully we're okay. Um, my name's Catherine Kelly, and as Krista said, um, both Katie and I are librarians um, for Lincoln City Libraries. We work at the Bennett Martin Public Library branch, which is downtown, just a block or two away. Um, and today we're happy to share with you um, um, a presentation that we did for the Nebraska um, Library Association conference in October of last year um, based on a project um, that Katie and I were involved with um, that spanned a couple of years. Um, our presentation is Welcome the World to Your Library, Creating a Multilingual Library Introduction Video. And um, it is about the process that we went through um, and experienced creating um, an audio-visual component um, that would help new users for our libraries um, understand the process of not only what the library offers them, um, you know, in the way of services and resources, but also information on getting a library card and some of the responsibili responsibilities that go, you know, hand in hand with being um, a library user. Um, the welcome key is under this matte um, image um, is supposed to represent, and I think um, it, it does, the fact that libraries um, are often the first place that new community users, whether they're refugees or immigrants or even just new um, people to your community, one of the first um, places that they stop to get information about their community. Um, so we felt that finding a way to welcome these users um, and giving them the key um, to access all the materials and resources that we have was really an essential thing. I may have to just click. And I may have to no. click. There we go. Okay, now so you be able to use all right, a little <laughs> bit of background um, about our library system. Lincoln City Libraries. Um, we are located in an, in an urban in a, the second largest city in the state of Nebraska. Um, we have eight library locations, the downtown main library, central library, which is Bennett Martin Public Library. And then we also have scattered strategically around um, the community other branch locations. So there are eight physical library locations plus a bookmobile, the lead bookmobile. Um, we have approximately 60 full-time staff. Uh, 44 part-time staff, and at our last count, over a thousand volunteers um, that assist us in our library. 
Um, community information. Um, in Lincoln, uh, the 2014 population estimate was 272,996. It's growing every year, so I'm sure it's exceeded that um, definitely by now. And if we look at our surrounding um, county, Lancaster County, which our library system also um, serves, um, that total is over 300,000 uh, population. Um, Lincoln has been a refugee resettlement community since 1983, so we have a history of um, serving people that are coming to our country as refugees and immigrants. Um, the languages, um, other, than lingu uh, other than English, which are used in homes, and this is um, based on information from um, the census, um, is over 11%. So over 11% of our population, um, a language other than English, is their primary language used in homes. Um, and we're also fortunate in that residents who are new uh, language learners learning English um, do have a great network of organizations in our community that have been developed over the years that help to serve them. I'd also add that um, University of Nebraska-Lincoln is in our city and we have a lot of people who are students or educators uh, from around the world that also speak other languages and that do use our libraries. Mm -hmm. So um, our project need, um, because we identified that libraries um, very often are one of the first institutions um, that immigrants turn to for help in learning English, um, you know, we've really recognized that in our experience working in our libraries. We also know that many immigrants are unfamiliar with how to use a public library. In many cultures um, and other countries, public libraries don't exist, so this is not a concept that, um, you know, they, they understand and don't understand what kind of things we can offer them as well as what the responsibilities are using a public library. And we also knew that new customers, I mean, and this is true for any customer, whether English is their first language or not, they really need a clear demonstration on how do you get a library card, what's required, and what resources um, would be available. The way that we currently um, operate in our systems is it's a one-on-one. -on -one. When a customer approaches a staff member, um, we explain how to get a library card, what that entails, um, fines, due dates, uh, try to mention the resources. But, you know, that's difficult to do. It's great having that one-on-one -on -one um, connection with new customers, but it can also be difficult to really get the full scope of everything that might be useful for them. And so, you know, we recognize that having something that, that um, people could use to get a fuller explanation and often a fuller explanation in their own language um, could be a real asset. So we learned about the American Dream Starts at Your Library grant. Um, this is something that started in 2007. Um, my awareness right now is um, the last grant libraries were funded in 2014. So um, it may be that this grant opportunity is not available any longer. But during that time period, starting in 2007, um, there were 166 libraries in 28 different states that um, were funded by the American Dream Grant. Um, the purpose of the grant is a one-time grant um, for um, up to from $5,000 to $15,000, um, which helps provide additional um, literacy services to adult uh, English language learners and their families. So many of the libraries have um, developed programs for things like collection enhancement, um, for tutors in their library, for citizenship classes, um, enhanced technology for those English language learners to use. And it's administered by the American Library Association um, with funding from the Dollar General Literacy Foundation. Um, in our community, part of the requirement was um, that you had to have a Dollar General store located in your vicinity. We had four, we have four of them in Lincoln, so that was um, one of the ways that we qualified for the grant. So our project goal was to develop a video um, that included audio and captioning, and it would welcome new users to their public library system in their native language. Um, we thought it would be a great way to expand on our verbal um, interactions with new customers and having the ability to tell them, 
here, if, if you have time, let me show you how you can watch a full video that's going to explain it to you clearly. You can watch it at your leisure. Um, we also wanted to enhance um, part of our literacy collection. Um, our downtown library and some of our other branches do certainly have materials in different languages and um, materials that are geared specifically for ELL learners. And so part of the funding for our grant um, we determined would be to enhance that by purchasing some new items. Um, part of the, the, the great thing about working on a project like this is that it really does build on some of our existing programs and partnerships with Lincoln City Libraries. Um, for quite a while, and we've got ongoing pro uh, programs with people like um, the Primetime Program, which, which is a grant-funded program, um, bringing in weekly storytellers and facilitators for Spanish-speaking and for Native American families, um, and that helps build literacy. Um, it's for children and for parents. Uh, Lincoln Literacy, which is a great organization in our community, um, works with our library. They have regular weekly um, computer classes that they facilitate um, using our, um, um, our, our facility, our training room. Um, we have library computer classes helping people that need assistance learning computers, and often those are people that may be newer to our community. Um, the Center for People in Need is another organization that serves refugees and immigrants, and we cooperate with them, um, providing things like story times. Uh, Lincoln City Libraries is also part of the New Americans Task Force, which is a great organization in Lincoln, bringing together um, people, representatives from all different organizations that serve um, New Americans, immigrants, and refugees. Um, and we often provide um, at our libraries tours for um, adult English language learner mm -hmm. students and whether those are um, through Southeast Community College and folks that have just arrived and are coming with translators and have uh, no English ability at this point or often students from the University of Nebraska, as Katie mentioned, um, who do have a command, but they are here studying and enhancing their, their language skills. So we currently are working in many ways with um, partner organizations and people um, who are English language learners. Um, of course, with any grant, there is a lot of research um, that went into it initially. Um, you know, the great thing is, as librarians, we like doing that kind of research, and um, so we did have to spend quite a bit of time um, looking at, you know, our community language demographics, what languages are being spoken um, most frequently, what are the most common languages other than English, you know, also what do we foresee for the future as far as changes or patterns. Um, compiling statistics for our library system, um, including things like what are we already um, providing, how many hours, and um, how many people are we serving through some of our um, similar um, programs through the library. Um, determining and documenting our cur current language partner organizations, so who are we working with or who would we like to work with um, who might be able to assist us with something like this where we're translating and, and providing language services. Um, and of course estimating our expenses and what we would contribute in the way of staff time um, and other funding. Um, and also this meant that we were identifying and making contact with possible partners in our community. So some of our really key project partners in our community, Lincoln Public Schools, um, who had great information and data um, letting us know how many children they have in their system um, that are currently enrolled in ELL. Um, Lincoln Public Schools also provides great services not only for their students but for their families. Um, so that really gave us a sense of the number of families um, um, in our community and what languages were being spoken, as well as um, giving us a possible resource for translators because they um, contract and hire um, translators to work with their students and families. Uh, Language Link, we were happy to discover in our community, which is an organization, um, and their purpose is to provide written and audio translations um, and providing that in many different languages. So that was a really essential um, resource. Uh, our library has worked often with Five City TV. 
Um, this is through our city department. Um, and they provide audio and video recording and editing. Um, we've worked with them for other library programs, such as the Ames Reading Series. And when we provide um, Heritage Month um, uh, programs, we've got one coming up um, this month for the American Pacific, um, the, sorry, the Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. So they typically film um, events like that that are happening on the library. Uh, happening at the library. And um, also the Omaha Public Library down the road were um, very gracious in sharing their video project experience and budget. Um, this was one of the ways that we first discovered that um, something like this could be a project. Um, they, they had, had done, done back in I think yeah. 2011, I had seen a presentation where they created um, a video for new users and that was really pretty inspiring and, and seemed like something that our library system could benefit from as well and again they were very nice in sharing you know their project experience and their expenses so that was really helpful for us in terms of developing the script um, I joined the project and we had a, a file on the grant information and then a deadline and that was about <laughs> it so it was a little intimidating um, so like librarians we always look for existing uh, resources and um, we had two: the Greenville library in North Carolina had put together a uh, welcome to your library video and then also the Omaha Public Library one. So I really kind of started with transcribing these videos just to get an idea of the type of information that they were including in their videos. And then um, our goal was to explain what a public library is and how it functions to people who might not have any understanding of this very American institution. So we needed to um, come up with simple definitions of library terms that many of us just take for granted. Um, and we also kind of wanted to emphasize that our services and our resources were free for all local residents. In terms of the script, um, like we started with reviewing the Greenville, North Carolina, and the Omaha um, public library videos. So that gave us a con uh, an idea of the concepts we wanted to cover. But we also wanted to emphasize our services and programs that we offered. And we needed to think uh, long term. We wanted this video to kind of last. Um, so we wanted to avoid any information that could be out outdated and Shortly after our video was completed, <laughs> our website changed, and so all of our screenshots of our it was immediately um, outdated, you yes. know. <laughs> and I noticed one of the other things I noticed is, you know, we talk about how you can have access to this through your computer, but you know, smartphones were just kind of coming online, so now you can access this information through your phones, which isn't really <laughs> included in our video either. But um, you know, that's going to happen. Um, the other thing we really wanted to feature was our library card and we wanted to equate it uh, to a passport so that um, the new immigrants would see it as a way that uh, it was something that would grant them access to our resources and our services. In terms of the video recording, uh, you know, who is going to participate? So we enlisted um, our staff, our library staff, um, and in the top left corner you can see Naren is one of our library service associates. She's from Bangladesh, so she had some um, great, I don't know what the term for it is, costumes or whatever her native, dress. whatever her native dress was. So she offered to wear that um, for our video, which gave it a lot of color. And um, we also had customers, just general customers that were in our libraries. We needed to get video uh, releases or media releases for any um, customers that were uh, a part of our video. And then Five City TV staff were also very gracious, and uh, one of them even um, did a shot in her own home, so we were <laughs> lucky to, to have that. Um, but we really wanted to show um, some diversity of our library users, uh, and we wanted shots to reflect um, our immigrants. You know, they, we wanted them to see people that were look similar to them um, in, in our video so that they felt welcomed um, and a part of our library community. In terms of our video recording, we started filming in September of 2013, 
So uh, we really wanted to kind of get all of our exterior shots done right away while we still had kind of nice weather mm -hmm. and uh, there was leaves on the trees <laughs> and our libraries actually looked mm -hmm. a lot better during the summer than they do Should during the winter. <laughs> um, so that was really kind of important uh, and that was one of our priorities there. Um, many of our scenes were shot uh, before we opened to the public and so the 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 shot in, on the middle on the right is our um, computer lab, and those are all um, library <laughs> staff that are you using those. <laughs> um, and um, then in terms of where, we wanted to feature um, the best parts of our branches. So that the top right image um, of that uh, customer service desk um, says libraries in many different languages, and we thought that, that would be a great shot. And like I said, with our, our computer lab at Bennett Martin, um, that was relatively new, so we wanted to grab that one. There are some screenshots. I think of the second one from the top uh, left is at Gear Branch, and that's probably got one of our better um, teen areas. Mm -hmm. So we were really trying to show off like the best parts of our library system. Um, and we also really wanted to show that we were a lot more than just books that we were, had services uh, and um, computers, um, story times, there were just a lot more available than just books on the shelf. Mm -hmm. In terms of translations <laughs> and audio recording, our, our goal was to create an eight minute video and we succeeded in doing that in English <laughs> only. Um, it's approximately about seven and a half minutes long, but uh, what we ran into when we were working with our translators was that um, they were a, a lot longer in the other languages. We have Arabic, uh, Korean, Russian, Spanish, and Vietnamese, and the the average length for the other um, the translation translated um, audio times is somewhere between eleven and eleven and a half minutes. <laughs> so not something you'd even and think about. And this is one yeah. of those things that right you don't really anticipate yeah. ahead of time that it takes longer or shorter amounts of time to say the different same things, thing yeah. in different, different languages. languages. And we had you know uh, City TV was able to kind of fill in with extra shots. Um, mm -hmm. So if you kind of watch the different languages or the different. Um, videos in different languages, you'll kind of see some, you know, where they've had to kind of expand the videos. Yeah, it's like the expanded um, version, right? You can get the extra. The director's cut. That's right, the director's cut. <laughs> that was not something we anticipated initially. Oh, no. And then in terms of translation and, and captioning, obviously one of the biggest problems for us is, you know, we didn't know if the translations were correct. I mean, that's kind of always a scary thing. You, you put it out mm. there and, um, you hope that it comes back because everybody, Trust. you know. We did, yeah. you know, luckily we did have a couple of staff people. So the Spanish mm -hmm. language and version the Russian, and the Russian, Russian language. Mm -hmm. We did have staff that um, were knowledgeable enough that they could view it and, and let us know that, yes, it, it seemed to be accurate. But, you know, it's a little bit of a leap of faith to make sure that Arabic mm -hmm. and Korean that the captioning and um, the audio are correct. You, um, just, you really can't edit it. Mm -hmm. um, some other choices we had to make were um, caption colors and fonts, and you can kind of see these were some of our different choices. Um, what what we ended up going with was uh, a yellow font, and then there's kind of this uh, little bit of a shaded background to it. Um, you know, we wanted to try to have it stand out a little bit in terms of captioning, but we also didn't want to block anything that was important in the video. And another thing to remember is Arabic runs from right to left. I mean, oh, there right. were there yeah, were mm -hmm. a lot of things that we were learning as we went through <laughs> on placement to make sure that if you were doing bright line breaks, you right. know, was that correct if you had to run the captioning into, you know, two and or like more lines. And like you they're going to cover different parts of the screen That's depending right. on which language it is as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so many things that we <laughs> did not know. Um, we're going to try to click on this link and see how this works and maybe show you an example of um, one or more of our videos. Let's see. So currently on our, our home page, there is a, a page that's devoted to our Welcome to Lincoln City Libraries videos. And you'll find all the different languages listed here. Um, I'm going to click on Corinne. Now, all of the videos start out with an introduction from a welcome from our director, Pat Leach. That one we did not have audio um, 
My name is Kathleen. I'm the director of Lincoln City. We Library. decided not to have a male Arabic speaker. Sorry, this is the Arabic version speaking over her. But we do have the captioning. Books, CDs, DVDs, and magazines. But then it goes into the audio and captioning in the language. And I'm sorry, is it? No, just, oh, down below. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Got you, got you. And as you can see, this one, the Arabic version, ended up being 11 <laughs> minutes yeah. long. Um, Did you? That's me. <laughs> Playing the helpful librarian. <laughs> Oh, and there's Katie. <laughs> See, we were intimately involved in this project. <laughs> See, everybody has to be in there. <laughs> and this is where they're explaining, you know, what's required to have a library card and um, you know, photo ID is basically what we require with uh, proof of a Lincoln or Lancaster County address. Okay, so that's an example of the Arabic um, video. As I said, we also have the Korean language, which is really beautiful script, um, Russian, uh, Spanish. Um, and Vietnamese. Big Vietnamese um, population. Yes, there, and Vietnamese, yeah. was, that was one of our original. Mm -hmm. um, the English version, um, which is also captioned, and you know, actually that gets a lot of use. We, you know, realize mm -hmm. if you're an English language learner, having the oh, English helpful. version mm -hmm. with captioning can be really useful. You know, for if you're, learning, yeah. you have some command and you're trying to enhance that. Um, and you know, also just for any of our customers, our English speaking customers, you know, as I said, it's sometimes hard to get the complete scope of here's, as a library customer, this is what you need to know. So this is a way for any customer um, that speaks English um, to be able, you know, reminders of some of the things that they might not be aware of. So, mm -hmm. so the English one, you know, also has been a really useful um, addition. But that was also something that we <laughs> didn't think about initially when we were putting things together. We knew we wanted captioning for our foreign languages, mm -hmm. but we didn't think until the very end. <laughs> Again, yeah, oh, another you know, gap that, <laughs> why did we not caption the English for, you know, um, the hearing impaired for, oh, and, yeah. and if you've ever relied on YouTube, because these oh. videos are available through YouTube, and relied on their it's, sort of automatic yeah. captioning, boy, there was a lot of incorrect, <laughs> nonsensical it's a, information. 50-50 as, as Correct, as from what I've seen, yeah. That's right. So that was something that retroactively we had to go back and say, hey, you know this completed video? Can you go back and caption that for us, too? That's something that, that we need. So um, as we pointed out, um, 
this video is accessible through the Lincoln City Libraries website. Um, so if you go to lincolnlibraries.org and you can see on the lower right hand corner that's um, the top part of our new redesigned um, home page. Scrolling further down you'll see the icon, the image that you see on the upper left, Welcome to Lincoln City Libraries, and then that's the gateway clicking on that that takes you to the full page with links to um, all of the different videos. Um, and again, this has been something that's really helpful in our libraries that we can walk someone over to one of our packs um, or tell them you can view this from home um, and access the videos at, at any point. Um, we also had DVDs created, so um, Five City TV was um, instrumental in creating a, a number of DVDs, which we have available for customers to check out and borrow. So searching our um, library catalog, Welcome to Lincoln City Libraries, they can find um, the DVDs there. They're at all of the branches, all of the different versions, the different languages are available on the DVD. Um, we did also have um, extra copies of the DVD made that we've distributed to some of our partner organizations. Oh, cool. um, for example, some of those that are with the, the yes, hands. with the um, um, New Americans okay. Task Force. Um, and then some, oh, Katie? Um, so to promote the video, uh, we also had a, a press release and then we had a demonstration to the New Americans Task Force, and that's, that's a collection of the local agencies that support uh, the new immigrants to Lincoln. Um, we have uh, it available for the ELL and newcomer tours. Um, some of them start at uh, Southeast Community College, and they'll mm -hmm. have them watch it at Southeast Community College, either you know after or before mm -hmm. the tours where they actually come to the library. Um, uh, Lincoln Literacy, um, when they come to our, our library and they work on our computers, a lot of times they'll have the, the students that, that they're working with watch that as well. And then Community Action, which is a, a local agency that helps um, people in poverty, they have it in their waiting room. Um, so that, that was uh, a nice way to share the video as well. Um, we'll talk a little bit just about our timeline and expenses, which, you know, with any project, <laughs> you have goals, and <laughs> um, those goals are sometimes <laughs> um, fluctuate a little bit. So the timeline, and Katie and I were saying, boy, it's hard to believe how long ago it was when we first started working on this project, yeah. that it's really been almost four years ago, um, although it did take up a solid, I think, two years of our, <laughs> our working life. But in August 2012, that was when we started by putting together our um, grant application, doing the research and submitting that. And then um, we did learn um, early in 2000. 13 in January that we were named um, as one of the grant recipients for the American Dream Starts at Your Library. Um, writing the script, that was compl completed in September of that year, 2013. As Katie mentioned, we started then filming um, during that time in the fall. And by January 2014, the translations and audio were completed. And we did use language link in the end. Um, the Lincoln Public School um, translators were typically not available, so we were really glad to find language link. Um, and we think they did a really great job. They, their translators worked um, pretty directly with the audio, audio recording with Five City TV, and I think that went really smoothly and, and well. Um, so then in June of 2014, um, you know, pretty much about a year after we really started doing the heavy work of this, um, the video was completed and we did release it. Um, for our final expenses, it was $10,000 for the video and audio recording, um, editing, and the DVD production. So that was all working with Five City TV and their portion of that. Um, for translation and audio narration through Language Link, um, the total cost ended up being $1,600. Um, that was a little different than what we initially budgeted. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, for collection materials, as I mentioned earlier, we did add a DVD series um, for English language learners geared for specific languages, so Chinese to English, um, Russian to English. Um, that cost was just over $1,700. 
And then $787 um, was used for print materials, um, translating um, as we knew we were going to a new um, library system, a new ILS. Um, it's devoted to working for um, new library applications. And, having and how much? I forget now. The, the grant was for how the much? Grant the amount, grant, grant, grant amount, our total grant amount was for, I think the total was fifteen hundred dollars. Boy, I, I know I can't believe that that um, amount right <laughs> offhand. Um, and that was something that, that when I mentioned the translation um, and audio costs, that was something that we initially had budgeted, and I that might be something that um, oh, is on the next slide. Um, our expense estimates um, initially were for translation were for $2,300 um, based on talking to language link and the number of languages that we planned on doing and the cost per word per hour. Well, that ended up um, dropping quite a bit when they had our final script. Mm -hmm. Now, when we first started looking at this project, there were additional languages that we wanted to include, mm -hmm. um, Kurdish and Noor. Um, French and French, I th we thought about um, also including. And initially, we cut those thinking that we, there was no way, based it. on the original estimates, um, that we would be able to. Well, again, the difference ended up between $2,300 and $1,600. Mm -hmm. So at that point, we had to just reallocate that money to um, other, um, to collection and to um, print materials. Um, so that, you know, that was definitely one of the challenges was, you know, trying not to exceed the grant funds, but then finding out we ended up having a, a bit of a surplus, you know, and in a perfect world, it would have been nice to be able to go back and add that in is. some more languages. Yeah. And that was one, one thing that we thought there's always that possibility with funding. You know, if we see changes in the refugee, you know, community mm -hmm. and incoming, it would be nice to be able to add, you know, it's new versions yeah. um, since we have the video and, you know, we've got that. Right. That's what I was going to ask. You, you can yeah. at some point in the future if you just get some more money just for that. Right. I suppose the hard part is done. The video is created. That's right. You can now just add whatever right. you want to. As, and we know as, 5 City yeah. TV is good at, you know, padding. If they need yeah. to. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be just one aim in a video. They can can work with us on that. Um, so, you know, other challenges, um, proofing the audio tracks, as we said, you know, when you don't have any knowledge of some of those languages, yeah. how do you assess and make sure that it's correct? Um, we haven't really heard any complaints. I know Katie maybe had mentioned she very, had one. Yeah, the very first day it was out, I had a, a gentleman and his wife that, that came into the library, and he spoke um, fairly good English. His wife did not really speak any so they spoke Arabic so I pulled it up and I was showing I was very excited and he asked me a question I can't remember exactly what it was but it was like you know it was like a is it a singular or plural pl pronoun I think was used and we don't have sing you know singular or plural right. pronouns and I was like well I think it was supposed to be plural and he was like <laughs> Oh, okay. So I don't know if he just didn't want to tell me <laughs> that might not be quite yeah. right or or Maybe what. But, that, you know, really tell us if it's wrong. Um, but they were very excited. I mean, his wife was really excited yeah. to be able to you know watch the video mm -hmm. and kind of understand it because you know I, I don't know how new right. they were to the community, right. but she really had no English speaking skills at all. Um, the other issue we talked about was the English captioning that initially we didn't even consider that there would be very good reasons to have the mm -hmm. English version captioned and luckily we were able to go back and, and do that. Um, another thing we found as we were ready to link this to um, our PACs in the library, um, our PACs typically don't have any speakers because mm -hmm. they're in the public area. <laughs> and the other thing is YouTube was blocked and that was uh, the main place where we had the video. Yeah videos post um, posted so that was a little bit of an issue <laughs> like wait a minute um, tech department can you help us with this so we have been able to um, we make sure that in the pack area there is at least one that has um, speakers attached mm -hmm. to it of course um, customers can always use our computer lab where we have headphones that are available to use and we would have headphones um, for customers to use as well and our IT department found a kind of work around um, to make sure that if they did get blocked on YouTube that there was a separate link that would take them to a place where we had it saved. But you know those were a few things that again trying to think of all the ins and outs um, 
sometimes you miss a couple of them. But we also had really good success stories. <laughs> <laughs> so um, our video has been watched more than a thousand times. Um, and and actually it is now up to about, well, this was um, true as of last October. I mean, it's up now to about a thousand, maybe about 1,400 mm -hmm. YouTube views combined for all of the. All the different versions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's very helpful to have. I had a, a woman who had come to the library who spoke very limited English. She was supposed to be working with a tutor from Lincoln Literacy, mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, the, the tutor wasn't there, so she had gotten kind of dropped off by her, her I think it was her daughter, and was expected to be picked up about a, you know, an hour later, and so she's kind of in the library, and she did not speak English very well. We had a kind of a hard time communicating. I was able to get her a library card because we had um, our library cards with some of the funds that were left over. We had um, the applications translated into other oh, languages, nice. so I was able to get her a, a library card, and then I took her back. We have a kind of a study room that we have. I took her back there, mm -hmm. and I. Um, connected her to this video and it was kind of funny to watch I mean when it comes out with Pat Leach our library director speaking she's obviously speaking in English with mm -hmm. the, the caption underneath but then it switches over mm -hmm. and as soon as it switched over to Arabic she kind of like you, know, you saw the face <laughs> light up and the, and so I really felt um, that at least I imparted the information mm -hmm. to her what mm -hmm. the library is how it works mm -hmm. um, so that at least she walked away from the library you know with a, a clear understanding of of how to use a probably, card, mm -hmm. and it makes them probably feel much more welcomed. I mean, there's See, just, it's I such think, a stressful situation going to new anyone moving anywhere, and there's something in their language, and like what you said with her perking up, it's like this is me, this is my. This See, is and I think me. that's yeah. exactly it. Is I mean, we want to welcome them, we want to welcome all customers to the library, and but I think that's really the key word in all of this is you know what we recognize, you know, you as a new member, we want you to feel like this is your library yeah. in your new community. And, and that's really it. When you see people light up, when you're doing a tour and it's being translated to two different groups, Karin speaking and Arabic speaking, and then you take them over and say, and now we have this. So this is something that you can view back when you return to your ELL class from home, come to our library, and you click on that, and all of a sudden they recognize it yeah. in their language. I mean, it really is a good feel good moment to make them feel like see we we you know we recognize we want you to be you know part of our our library system and so um the current society of nebraska also posted it on their website mm -hmm. which was really neat yep. to see um and the script for that is just fascinating to me i i don't know if you've <laughs> know, ever if you've ever mm -hmm. seen the 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 mm -hmm. script for for um the current language it's, it's gorgeous and nothing that I wouldn't be able to <laughs> comprehend whatsoever but um, and then like I said Lincoln Literacy does use it um, the the new um, Americans Task Force Agency has has the video so we've ha you know had um, a lot of success in getting getting that information out to the community here's another good way right <laughs> to yeah. share our success story um, yeah. Yeah, That's so right. when there. Courtney Young, who year. was the ALA president, was at um, the NLA conference in 2014, it was she mentioned the American Dream Starts at Your Library um, mm -hmm. program during during her keynote, and so it was really great that Katie and I got to go up and say, we're one of those libraries, and thank you so much for this support, because it is a way that, you know. And I had my tablet with us, and we pulled it right up and kind of <laughs> showed her stuff. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Courtney is great. Yes, yes, so it was awesome. But I mean, it really, I, I think we see Katie and I so much in our library system in our city. I mean, how many immigrants and um, new community members we have coming in. I mean, it's a daily, mm -hmm. um, um, a daily thing where we know we have people and this is their first visit and they're very unsure. And so to find um, a way to, to impart, you know, this information. I just think it's been a really, it was a really gratifying project to work on um, and you can really see the impact and, and how it just um, makes things more clear um, for those customers. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and again, there's our emails, which I'm sure Krista will also have, but you know, if anyone has any questions about it, you know, feel free to um, contact us. Um, and then we also have a, a list of some of our different sources and the information um, available as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Thank you. So um, does anybody have any questions? Um, 
nothing got typed in just now. We have one. Um, if you have any questions, um, thoughts, anything about this, um, type into your question section in your GoToWebinar interface. Or if you want to use your microphone, say, unmute me. I have a microphone. <laughs> I'll ask my question that way. We can do that. Not a problem. Um, we do have a question here from actually from one of our staff here. Um, mm -hmm. Any plans to make the DVDs in other languages? Now you said redoing some of the video. Would, would that be something as well? Well, I mean the, the DVDs future? that we have right now do have separate videos which, with each mm -hmm. of the languages and the captioning. So mm -hmm. if we were to ever, you know, add additional ones, yes, we would we probably DVDs reissue add, DVDs yeah, so that it would would contain all of them on the, the single DVD. So just DVD. a single DVD with It's all just a single DVD, yeah. different chapters, different and each chapter is for uh, uh, the different language. So, language. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, now you did say, oh, as we know from this, you did this, this project was from a few years ago, mm -hmm. and they were released in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and the website changed. <laughs> and the <laughs> website is, changed. <laughs> but the no. information about, you know, what a library does for you, what that all that content is still right. Useful There's there. very few. I looked at the screenshots. Yeah. There's very, very few screenshots, yeah. close-up screenshots of our website. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't think there's so anything that would be that. that yeah, that's what I thought yeah. too. On but retrospect, I was wondering, is there any plans to do an update to it? Mm -hmm. Maybe do. I mean, I know this one took a grant, but right. mm -hmm. is there? Is there? I know it's only been two years yeah. since it was first released. Is there any thought that at some? I mean, at some point you'd have to. But well, here's because, what here's yeah. what I was. I mean, for from my um, perspective, again, the mm -hmm. the this when you're looking at the website you know from behind and it's showing it I don't think it's so it's anything know. that would be yeah. that confusing that when someone comes in and say oh I was expecting it expecting mm -hmm. it to be blue and yellow and not yeah. this or that we were very careful about things like fines you know not putting what the amount is for a fine I mean we tried mm -hmm. not to include specific detail where we thought that could conceivably change. I mean, generally right. our policies... Well, that's, a good, that's a good tip. But, yeah. you know, like lending periods. I mean, we have also changed recently mm -hmm. lending periods on some of our DVDs. Single disc DVDs mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. check out for one week instead of three weeks. Um, you know, we try to avoid anything that might really date it or become obsolete. Exactly, make it dated. <clears throat> yeah. Now, I would say, for example, if we were to build a new central library downtown, well, no, no, no. If, that um, happen, if that happens in the yeah. future, that might be a good time to redo it. And right. um, you know, Definitely if our locations right. change substantially, I mean, that is yeah. one thing. At the end of the video, there are images and the addresses, you know, All for each of our library right. locations. So there are things like that that those would be more more major changes. Those would but be that's major. That's a good tip that when you're making one of these, any of these kind of training things, is either make it so it can be timeless, yes, or mm -hmm. be aware that in a year or two you're going to have to redo it because right. you put that in there. Because if you're investing yeah. that amount of time and, and money, and then you, you, you want it to have legs. Yeah, yes. to edit it and do all mm -hmm. that, it takes time. And yeah. I mean, I think That's for Katie and myself, I mean, that was one of the biggest, like, boy, we did not know what we signed on <laughs> for. Because to become uh -huh. a script writer, a oh, casting yeah. director, <laughs> uh, you know, on location, no. um, you know, there were so many, and and again, then just the concept of all these different languages. I mean, it was yeah. it was um, that was challenging. And then the the deadlines that we had from ALA sometimes right, would right. slide too. Like they oh, really? were supposed okay. to give us a certain information or something by a certain date, and then it would get backed up. But hmm. we yeah, had, sometimes you know, it wasn't us not making the deadline. <laughs> I mean, again, thank you ALA, yeah. thank you Dollar General Literacy <laughs> Foundation. Um, but but yeah, I mean again, there you know, there's everything that goes along with the grant, the reporting, and um, you know, information that they need, and then sometimes things that we would need from them. And you know, I mean, it it was definitely a challenging experience, but I think we both felt it was um, definitely worthwhile. It was very rewarding. Yeah. It was also nice mm -hmm. to be able to include other staff in the process. Mm -hmm. It was great, you know, our mm -hmm. staff that were um, stood in as actors and customers. <laughs> we really appreciated also the customers that, you know, mm -hmm. performed as customers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, I think it was really one of the best learning experiences. Yeah. Um, and again, I feel like the end product, you know, is really rewarding and yeah. hopefully a, a really useful tool for mm -hmm. our customers. So you have a question that came mm -hmm. in. Um, have you added any additional programming like program at as a result mm -hmm. of this grant. So did this maybe bring about we 
we've connected more with this community right. and we've discovered they need this now as an extra service or program. Well, I mean, I would say things. For example, Katie has been working on this month's um, Asian Pacific American right. Heritage mm -hmm. um, programming. I mean, I think we have new contacts in that community sure. because we've been, um, you know, in connection with them. I mean, I think... Um, you know, we're doing, we've added some other programs. Again, we're still working with some of the same organizations like Lincoln Literacy. So the Flair, right, so the Flair mm -hmm. program, um, which was family literacy and for family literacy, something for immigrants and refugees. And that was, again, a family program for both um, children and for adults. Um, you know, that was a newer program that I think we started doing since um, this evolved. Um, but, you know, I think we, we've always been pretty active in trying to be in touch in our community with mm -hmm. what yeah. kind of services and, and, and what organizations are serving refugees and, and immigrants. And so just trying to, to tap into that and say, yeah, we're here to do story times, to speak to your groups. I mean, we've, I we've always been pretty... Yeah, that's a good, important thing that all mm -hmm. libraries need to do is not, don't be insulated and just doing your right. thing. See what's out there mm -hmm. and connect with them. and. Yeah, they might come in and do things in your right. library. Or you might go to their locations. Or and that's it. Trying to, a lot to of what we do yeah. is outreach where we're going to those locations or um, to those groups. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yep. Uh, anybody have any other um, questions? Nobody else has typed anything in yet. So, anybody else out there type it in, get it in before we wrap up for today. Um, we just do have um, our staff here at the Library Commission watches the show in another room. Um, <laughs> Upstairs, which I forget where I am. <laughs> uh, I'm very proud of our Link City Library colleagues. Thanks for sharing it. Very oh. terrific program. Yeah. And I agree. Yes. That's why I wanted Thank to have you, you on the show. Yeah. Like you said, I saw that you had done, I knew that these pro the program was happening because Omaha had done one and I right. you guys were doing mm -hmm. one. And then when I saw it in the um, program from last year's conference, I was like, mm -hmm. well, there you go. We need to spread that more. <laughs> um, all right. If we don't have any more urgent, urgent questions right now, I think we could wrap it up for today. Thank you very much. Thank you well, for the opportunity. For yeah. yeah. Um, I'm glad we got to get this on the show. Um, it has been, it's still being recorded. Um, if you do have any other questions, you know, contact them. There's their Please info. Do. Um, just look up Lincoln City Library's webpage. I'm sure you can get to them yes, through that as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and they can share more about what um, they did uh, with this. All right, so um, that'll wrap it up for this week's show. I'm going to switch over to somewhere here. We have a browser. All right, um, it'll be on our website, which I'm going to show you right here now. Whoops, on the keyboard. Let's try this here. There we go. Um, and Compass Live has a website online, and luckily nobody else has called anything this. So if you just Google us, <laughs> you're at the top. <laughs> We're the only results. Yay. <laughs> um, uh, the recording is being done, and it will be right here. These are our upcoming shows. Right underneath them is our archive sessions. And here, for example, is last week's, last week's yeah, where we have um, the recording we posted on our YouTube channel, the presentation, their slides. I'll put up on the Library Commission has a slide share account. And um, this I need to update. Um, last week we did a show. Um, we usually use Delicious website for collecting websites, mm -hmm. and they were updating last week. Mm -hmm. And this whole site was down, but I just checked it appears they're back and ready to work. So I'll get last week's up and this week's all the website. They were links, like you saw, were in the presentation. Mm -hmm. I also put them there as well so you can have that access. Um, maybe later this afternoon that'll be available. We'll see how quickly I get done. Um, so that'll be for today's show. I hope you join us next week when our topic is um, Linux laptops for libraries. You see if all our, our upcoming shows are here for May and June. We've got more coming up. Always keep checking, keep adding shows. But um, this is um, Alex Lent. He's a director, library director in Massachusetts who um, many libraries um, loan out laptops, um, tablets, whatever. He's decided to go the um, Linux route. Um, it's a cheap, easy, open source type thing. So he's going to tell us about how they did that at um, his library. So he'll be remoting in for us um, next Wednesday. So definitely sign up for that in our future shows. Also, if you are a Facebook user, we do have a Facebook page. We do post updates for when our new shows are coming out, when the recording is available. Um, if it gets loaded here, I also do, here we go, a little reminder for today's show. Log in on the fly if you didn't pre-register so people know when the show is about to start. So if you are big on Facebook, um, like us over there, and you'll get notifications of um, what's going on in the show. Other than that, that wraps it up for today. Thank you very much, and I hope you'll we'll see you next week. I'll get this up. Ah, what did I click on? 
I accidentally unshared. There we are. <laughs> Hope you'll see. Join us next week on Encompass Live. Thanks. Bye-bye.